In the popular TV series Star Trek, the USS Enterprise was given the ability to warp space-time, thus allowing it to travel across the galaxy in almost no time. While to most people this seems like just pure sci-fi we will never reach, some theoretical physicists and researchers at NASA found a way to theoretically create one. First, let's start at the beginning. In 1994, Miguel Alcubierre proposed a design of a warp drive which, in theory, did not contradict Einstein's field equations. The workings of the warp drive were based on space-time. Space-time is an abstract model to understand how gravity allows celestial bodies to interact with each other. In this animation, we see how the sun's gravity bends space-time, and as a result, the Earth rotates around it. Let's think of this grid as the fabric of space-time. We will look at it from above to simplify. Here is our warp drive. What we will do is basically contract space-time in front of the warp drive and expand space-time behind the warp drive. This effectively makes it move farther from its starting point and closer to its destination. However, to expand space-time behind it, the warp drive must use negative mass since positive mass contracts space-time. Negative mass expands space-time. This is where the NASA scientists come in. They use something they call the Valjudei Warp Inferometer. Nice name, but how does it work, and how do we detect a warp drive? Well, basically, a helium neon laser shoots a red beam. The red beam hits a splitter mirror, which splits the beam into two different beams. Both beams hit a mirror, and then are reflected back onto a detector. However, one of the beams passes through a hypothetical warp drive that the researchers create. When both of these beams come back to join and hit the detector, we can calculate the strength of the warp drive by finding a difference in the time they take to hit the detector. This is because a warp drive would reduce the time of one beam by a certain difference. The greater the strength of the warp drive, the greater the difference in time. Now, how does our warp drive work? The theory works around something called the Casimir effect made by Hendrik Casimir. Basically, if two plates are placed about 100 nanometers close to each other in a vacuum box, these plates move towards each other for no reason. This is due to virtual particles. Virtual particles come into existence when particles come close to each other. These virtual particles break every known rule of physics for a split second before they rejoin their original particle. According to Einstein, any particle can also be taught off as a wave. So now we have lots of random waves coming in and out of existence. While there could be an infinite different types of waves with various parameters between the plates, there would be many more outside because opposite waves between the plates are forced to combine. Because more waves exist outside than inside, a force pushes these plates together. The theory is that since the pressure outside the plates is zero, the force inside the plates must be negative. This means there must be negative energy inside. The white Jude inferometer takes advantage of this by pushing light in this tiny space with negative energy, and they did find evidence of negative energy. It is not entirely clear to scientists if this will work and if it could apply to larger scales, but if proven right, this could be revolutionary. Thanks for watch. From now on, we will start trying to post on a weekly schedule, so stay tuned. Bye!